that's what hit me hard. That was the hardest thing was the fact that I had, that's what I kept dwelling over. I'm pulling this shelter out. I can't believe I'm doing this. I always, my attitude was, you know, I have the shelter. I'm never going to have to get in this thing, you know, and that was a hazardous attitude. Um, my way of thinking every year we, we do shelter training was all, oh, it's just, you know, going through the, the, the motions. I'm never going to have to get in this. I'm never going to be in that position. That was my attitude. The hardest part when the decision came, uh, when Doug and I were, were talking was the fact that, uh, we were going to have to deploy. And I went, I, I, it was denial. I said, no way. And, and then you think like we all do in the fire service, you think of all those guys that are going to, uh, you know, immediately you're going to have baked potatoes sent to you in the mail. You're going to have all these different things, you know, pizza delivered to the station in aluminum foil. You're going to have all these different things going, oh God, every face of every practical joker on the, uh, in the fire service is on the front of that shelter. But you know, it doesn't matter. It, 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 it's a piece of safety equipment and you're trained to use it. When the time comes, you have to use it. You, you, and it's a completely different scenario too when you're also responsible for other people and that is the right decision. Don't be scared to open your shelter just because you know there's gonna be investigation. If it's, if it is, if you have to use it as a, um, as a tool to keep you from getting in a worse spot or whatever, you know, to do that. Because I know running through my head was, oh great, there's going to be an investigation and all this stuff. Now we're going to be the guys in the refresher video. That shouldn't be something that's running through your head when you're opening a shelter or you're inside a shelter is all the repercussions afterwards. Just, you know, you need to be thinking about what you're doing and protecting yourself. And don't never wait too long to pull your shelter, really. Don't be afraid to. It's a tool we have to use it wherever in the scenario to use it, but don't put yourself in the scenario to use it just because you have one. You, you don't, you know, just go running into a bunch of fire or an unsafe situation just because you have a fire shelter. They're there for when the unsafe situation occurs around you. Well, I had a new generation shelter, uh, pulled out of the case really easy, out of my line gear, grabbed the two yellow tabs on it, flipped it open. The wind wasn't really extreme at the site. It was just second nature to, to pop the shelter out and to follow the steps and, and put your feet towards where the fire is going to be coming, uh, grouping people up uh, so we were in tighter proximity. Everything really seemed to, to go just like, like the training say. I remember almost laughing to myself because you hear over and over how the wind's going to be blowing, things are going to be loud, things are going to be crazy. You know, when you do it out on a lawn in a spring summer day, it's nice and easy to do. But in that situation, the wind was 50, 60 miles per hour. I mean, enough just to be popping trees over all around you. The heat, the embers, the smoke. I mean, it was, with all those different environment factors, it was a lot more difficult than any training I've ever prepared for. I proceeded to open up my, my shelter. Um, the plastic tab on it had broken off when I tried to rip it off. So I had taken my glove and put it underneath my, my armpit. And I also had my radio under my armpit. Got the, the, the wrapper off the, the shelter. And I proceeded to get in the shelter um, from the ground. The winds were so, were so great at that point that if I had tried the traditional uh, way of stepping into my shelter and then falling to the ground, I, I believe my shelter probably would have been a kite. Oh, my hands are burnt, but it ripped open easy. It just says left hand, right hand, you grab it, you shake it out. But it was so windy, it kind of, it caught some air and I had a, I held on to it. And if I would have lost it, I probably would have died. <laughs> so I finally just, I got into it and laid into it and kind of just tucked my legs back, held everything. I got my elbow situated and that's when I started digging the hole for my face because it was so hot and hard to breathe in there. It was pretty intense. And I look up and it's just, it's overhead and it's just, um, just red and orange above me. The plastic didn't want to come off the, uh, the, the shelter itself. And uh, so at some point I just kind of took the shelter and was kind of putting it between me and, and what felt like the hottest spot, which was right above the right side of my head. And I'm staring at, at 
which just seems like chaos to me, but at the same time trying to fumble with the pack. So after about a couple of seconds, I finally get the pack open and, and I'm pretty much in the water. And now I'm starting to get the pack uh, open and the shelter deployed. You know, I, I don't think I really tried to keep it down. I just held on and, and tried to give myself a little pocket to, to um, give myself a little room to make decisions, what I was gonna do, uh, talk to the people I was trying to talk to. Um, I didn't really have an issue with it, uh, getting caught up in the wind or, or it getting stuck under the water or um, having issues with it, um, not having control of it. I just remember just taking as much as I could and giving myself enough space in there and just uh, holding it down with my hands. And actually, I think after a while, I think my engineer, he didn't have a shelter. He ended up coming in with me for a little bit um, just to get away from the smoke and all that in there that was just sitting. And um, he came in and hung out with me. And so it was actually a lot, a lot uh, easier holding it down because I, I only had one side, he had another side. And, I, you know, I would hope nobody would ever, if it came down to two people, one shelter, that you would turn someone down, you know. I don't remember just having a, you know, a quick, can I get in? Yeah, you know, get in, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. It was, I just remember the sensation of burning, him yelling, I'm burning, you know, I'm burning, I'm burning, you know, we need to deploy, we need to deploy, and, you know, I just remember the shelter, once we shook it open, it popped open, and we were just, scrambling to get inside, you know. I'm curled up at the front of it, you know, just tucked up in the top, and he had um, kind of grabbed the edges and just sat straight down, so he was leaning forward, and he was trying to sit on the edges, and I was just kind of huddled up at the top of the shelter. I made a conscious effort to keep my gloves on, and I didn't have any trouble whatsoever uh, deploying the shelter. I remember shaking it out, and the winds were pretty erratic, and I at one point almost lost it. I had to kind of like grab it again. I was like, oh, anybody see that? Like that would have been pretty embarrassing, you know, as it goes blowing down the hill or, or something of that nature. So, but I remember keeping a pretty firm uh, hold on it. And then just like they taught us, kind of got inside of it, dropped to my knees, made sure that uh, everything was inside, held it down with kind of like my lower legs and my forearms. Just from using the practice shelters, they come out easily. So I just remember grabbing mine and shaking it and it was still, it was still stuck in there and it, it just took me a couple shakes and I just for a split second said, come on, come on, let's, let's go. As I'm shaking it out and, and everybody, you know, everybody's around and we were close together at that time, we were all doing it. And then it came out and opened up nicely after that. First, when it all happened, and I had that thought through my head where we're not going to make it, and it's, it's not right, it's too hot, and we can't breathe. But then as the shelter was over our back, it was like, hey, I can breathe again. You hear they say it's like closing the door on the oven, and it really was. I mean, it, it was just amazing crawling underneath. And once inside the shelter, for me, at that point, I knew we were going to survive it. I mean, it was like shutting the door on an oven, it was the heat outside, you know, from it actually being burned while trying to get in your shelter to finally getting it over the top of you and laying down and getting actually what seemed like a clean breath of air, you know, even though you're facing the dirt and it was completely night and day difference. I mean, no way to describe it. It was a huge relief to, to get in the shelter.